Welcome to The Big Picture, I'm Phil Arno. To most of us, when we think about the law, a police car on the side of the road with a radar gun might come to mind. Or more commonly, we watch the news and see some, someone has been arrested for a terrible crime or was just sentenced. Perhaps we've been to court, maybe for a ticket or to small claims court or maybe for something a little bit more serious. But if our lives are in order and everything is going the way we want, and most of us don't think too much about the law or the legal system. Courtrooms can be scary places, maybe even intimidating would be a good way to put it. So most of us would be just fine avoiding a trip to that big fancy official looking place of justice. My guest today is an exception to that rule. 40 years ago in 1978, Penny Wolfgang began a career as a judge in Erie County and continued down that road until just recently, retiring as a Supreme Court judge in New York. Today, we're going to talk about the big picture, legal big picture. Welcome to the show, Penny. It's a pleasure um, to be here. I wouldn't have come if I knew you were going to give like dates and ages, Phil. You should have warned well, me. Well, you know what? We started, uh, you know, actually, I started uh, before you in my uh, in the field of uh, media, so mm -hmm. don't feel old. Yeah, let's not bring um, that up. <laughs> the uh, the big p picture now uh, is uh, the Supreme Court nominee uh, nationally. The uh, the uh, Brett Kavanaugh has been uh, named to uh, replace uh, Anthony Kennedy on the Supreme Court, and with that nomination is going to come a lot of political wrangling. Um, how can you judge? No pun intended. Uh, a nominee for a position like this beforehand. I mean, he has a record, but in the past, uh, there's been some surprises. You would think a judge would go in one direction, and he turns out to be totally opposite of what you know was anticipated. How do you know? How can you judge? Uh, you kind of answered the your own question. You don't. It's like you don't know, and I think that's a, a really good point and that people do not f focus on that like you have on that question. They're you, in opponents or proponents of, of the judge are like he's too conservative, he's too liberal, he's or not liberal enough or this or that. But in the past, if you look back on Supreme Court judges, not even in our lifetime, they were expected to be one way. But in doing their job, in doing the job that they are sworn to do, they have sometimes ruled uh, the way people would be, not expect as far as, as far as what they had done in the past, but they're doing their job. They're doing what they're supposed to do, which is decide each case on its merits without any preconceived notions or biases, based on the facts, apply the facts of that case to the law, and it might come out, the decision might come out as people not ex do not expect. Well, without you know making a, a case for what's good and what's bad, the 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 two political parties have a different philosophy, typically, uh, as to what a judge should be like. I mean, the mm -hmm. Republicans, most of the time, they state that they want a judge that strictly. Uh, follows the Constitution right. the way it was written. Right, a constitutionalist or right, originalist. An originalist. Uh, and and the, the Democrats feel that the Constitution is a kind of a living document that should be interpreted based on where we are today as opposed to where they were 200 years ago or more when they, they wrote the document. Is, is there, I mean, if you go by strict intentions of the founders, it, wasn't it basically that document, if you wanted to change it, you had a, a method for changing it, uh, the amendments? Oh, I think um, a lot of this has to do with a misunderstanding that people have of the, of the role of the three branches of government. They have, a different rule, they have a different role. And I think there's been a lot of confusion, whether it be Democrats, Republicans, or the public in general, on what the roles are. Because, like well, you actually just pointed out, if you want to write a new law, uh, laws are written by the legislature, by, by the, the people who are, we elect to write the laws. Then the president uh, the, has his role 
and it, it's set out in the Constitution. And then the Supreme Court judges have their role, which is to um, interpret the law as they see as they see it, read the Constitution, apply the facts to of the case that they're dealing with, to uh, how it applies, how the Constitution applies, not to legislate, not to, no matter whether it's Republican or Democratic. Um, it's not their role. It's not how our government is set up. Well, that's the perfect example. Um, John Roberts, when it, the question of Obamacare came up, um, from what I understand, they were the the court was was prepared to rule that it was unconstitutional, and John Roberts basically rewrote the law so that it complied with the rule of the Constitution. But that wasn't his job. Well, people say that, but right. I mean, I'm not saying I, I don't know if he if that's true or not. I mean, he he looked at the Constitution and he said it's constitutional or it's not, and to say that he rewrote it is like an, our interpretation or your interpretation, really. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's his. I don't think okay. he, I don't think he would uh, well, sit here and agree the, and say no. I rewrote it. He would say no. The Constitution said it was right. It was legal. It was constitutional. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I remember you know? the, the the question yeah. was can can the can the government force somebody to buy something um, right. that they don't want to buy? Uh, you know, which is a in the, this case a uh, uh, insurance mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think that the initial response was, well, the government can't force you to buy something. I mean, it, you, it's, it's a free country. Mm -hmm. You can buy what you want to buy, or you don't have to buy what you don't want to buy. And he came up with a, a way that you, you know, justified the government yeah, but saying you know, yes. that's, that's, that was his quote unquote interpretation of the okay. law. Okay. So, <laughs> well, I mean, good, there's it, a lot of semantics, it, yeah. but he said, he interpreted the law and say, we're no, no, we're not making you do that. <laughs> no, the government's not making you do that, right? <laughs> I, you know I, I what? Think it's a, you would know, have had as they the, say, <laughs> it's a slippery slope, right? You know, uh, when you show that picture, uh, before when we showed the Supreme Court judges, I feel really bad because I know when you uh, asked me to be your guest, it was before the announcement um, of uh, Judge Kavanaugh, and you were expecting it to be me, and I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, looking for myself. Yeah. And I know, right, it was going to be right there on the, on the <laughs> left. I, I know it's going to be. Well, no, not next gonna. time, though, next he's time. probably he's got another for, one or two. Uh, yeah, because coming. it wasn't going to be a woman. Uh, mm. To you know how people yeah. thinking not not just the president but the public, I think feels that uh, when a woman leaves the bench, it's going to be uh, the replacement oh, should yeah. don't, you know should be a woman. <laughs> so I was ready, but I knew well, it was a man. So you know, it just keep keep, <laughs> keep it warm. We'll, we'll you know we'll we'll see what yeah. happens next time. Um, the, you know the, the uh, Brett Kavanaugh he he clerked for Kennedy and he clerked for Sotomayor. Mm. Um, you really can't tell anything from who they worked for in the past, right? I mean, if he clerked for Scalia instead of Sotomayor, uh, that wouldn't make any difference in terms of his leanings. Uh, his, his leanings. I don't, I don't know if you can tell anything in the sense that uh, how we just talked about before, how he's going to rule on cases in the future. And f I think people are foolish to be using their crystal ball and saying how it's going to happen. However, you have to um, think that the person is going to be influenced by somebody that the, the clerk is going to be influenced by the judge that they are, um, you know, working with because they're going, they are going to have to reflect the views while they're there in any case and some of the, of that judge very often they they're the ones that the clerks are the ones that have to everyone knows this that write the decisions write maybe a draft of the decision or do the research and whatever so they're going to know how the judge they're clerking for is thinking mm -hmm. and try to reflect that they'll have to reflect that they can't write an opinion that's the opposite of what their judge is going to believe and mm -hmm. you know as a rule so i think I think you can tell somewhat. I mean, I think there's got to be some influence of Kennedy working for him, although a lot of people, um, there seems to be a lot of clerks. His prior clerks are all over the, the map. So we'll see. I don't know. But I know, like my clerk, I mean, just to use a, like a local example, 
uh, who has been worked with me for I don't know maybe tw almost 20 years knew how I would think, knew how I would rule, knew how I would, you know, want to uh, come down on a, on a decision and would, you know, try to, like, do the research. And if it turned out I, he thought I was wrong, he would point it out. But mostly he would try to reflect my thinking. So I'm thinking that probably the same is in the Supreme Court. Mm. When a clerk uh, works for a, a judge, uh, you know, on, on specific cases, what how much work is done by the clerk as opposed to the judge? <laughs> I mean, the judge says, okay, look up the statute and the statute and, and say, see where this stands? Um, I think a lot of the, a lot of the, I'm not sure in the Supreme Court, of course, mm -hmm. I've never been there, but I, I don't see why it would be any different. Uh, the, the, the clerk, and people think, when you say clerk, it's funny because they're thinking of somebody that is yeah. writing something mm -hmm. down or something, but law clerk in, in, to judges is a very, very influential and important position no matter what the level of the judge. And the law clerk, um, as a rule, is doing a lot of the, the background work behind the scenes, is sometimes even talking, many times even meeting with the lawyers, depending on the situation. And yes, doing the research, and yes, writing sometimes the actual drafts, although in the Supreme Court, in appellate courts, we know that the, it's a collaborative effort where, you know, uh, the, among the judges themselves, where they write their decisions and then they compare them, and, you know, we see dissents and everything mm -hmm. like that. But the law clerk is uh, very important. So uh, the law clerk does a lot of the work so that the <laughs> judge can be clear minded. I think and, so, and and, and, and a good law yeah. clerk also mm -hmm. can point out, um, you know, both sides. Can maybe mm -hmm. the maybe the judge might be thinking, okay, we're going to affirm this, or mm -hmm. this is constitutional. Give an example of the Supreme Court. Yes, this okay. this is constitutional. Law clerk could point out the other side. And speaking of clear-minded, I, I read a, a, a thing just recently where neckties uh, cut off uh, circulation to the brain. You know, now that this applies only this applies only to men, though. <laughs> 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 okay, well, that's, uh, that's it for this segment of The Big uh, Picture. We'll be back uh, to talk more about The Big Legal Picture right after this.